Dunch Bags. What's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and it is time for another edition of Top 5, the series where I talk about my favorite songs from various compilations, and it's usually from Monster Cat. And as you probably guessed from the title of this video, today I'm going to be breaking down the latest compilation from Monster Cat, uh, Monster Cat Uncaged Volume 8. Now, it's no secret that I'm not the biggest Monster Cat Uncaged fan, I've voiced it before. I feel like the label's urge to cater to festival and club goers has caused them to pick up a lot of really lackluster music. Oftentimes I'd say even worse than what the majority of mainstream bass music labels are putting out as of late, especially uh, someone like Disciple or Never Say Die. And I'd say that this compilation is the worst culprit of all, representing the last six months of what Monster Cat Uncaged has been doing. There's a lot of stinkers on this one, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a compilation Monster Cat's put out that's had so many songs that I just can't get into or understand why they would even sign to begin with. Beyond, I guess, name recognition, I somewhat understand why they feel like they have to bring on these bigger name DJs and producers to, I guess, sell tickets and get more people on board with the Monster Cat brand. But at the same time, this album also makes me yearn for the days that Monster Cat was all about finding talented up-and-comers and putting them in the limelight, giving them a family. In addition to that, my new least favorite song in the entire Monster Cat catalog can be found on this album, and uh, I guess I'll let you guys debate in the comment section on what exactly that song is. Overall, though, a lot of disappointments here. I mean, a tenth of the album is taken up by Reaper Productions, and the only one that I actually liked was Shouldn't. Didn't really care for either of Habstract's tunes on this album, and then even the releases by some artists who I've really enjoyed in the past, like Tokyo Machine, Boss Fight, Slushy. Dion Timmer, and Nitro Fun, in my opinion, coming at us with some of their weakest releases to date. Looking at this album's track list and seeing debuts from the likes of Dylan Francis, Eptic, Essinger, and Whipped Cream, it's fair to say I expected more, and there totally is a light at the end of the tunnel because there are quite a few tracks in this album that I did find myself enjoying a lot, um, but most of them are from established artists who we've heard from time and time again, so don't get too excited with my top five countdown this time. As usual, my top five isn't going to be counted down from least favorite to favorite or anything like that. I'm going to be listing them off in the order that they appear on the album, and with with all that being said, let's dig into my top five, and starting us out, I've got Falling by Crank Dad. I'm not sure if I've voiced this on this channel before, but uh, in my opinion, Crank Dad was one of the least interesting names in EDM of the 2010s. Most of his stuff to me was very basic, cheesy melodies paired with very flat and lifeless production, and his Monster Cat stuff wasn't really looking all that much better, with Wobble being among some of my least favorite releases in the Monster Cat catalog, and I, I guess I liked Neil Before Me somewhat. I, I think I more liked it for Asking Alexandria, though, because I, I didn't care for the drops, really much at all. However, I feel like in recent months, Crank Dad has really flipped his fate in my eyes with some serious improvements. His productions are more detailed, his mixdowns are significantly more clean, and I feel like overall the ideas he's bringing forward are much more interesting to me, and I feel like Falling is an excellent example of that. Jumping between power-packed melodies and harsh mechanical growls in the drops, also having quite an excellent sense of progression throughout the track's running length, with each drop adding more intricacies and layers, uh, the second drop adding a more harmonic line, and the third one adding in like a little bit of a vocal chop. I also really enjoy the vocal performance on this song, even though there's not a ton of lyrical substance to it, and I'm not totally sure who to credit that to because there's no 
feature listed. Maybe it's Crank Dat himself, I have no idea. But no matter what, I have to give props to Crank Dat for how he used the vocal in the song, pairing it with some excellent chords, as well as uh, layering it with a vocoder at points that I think sounds really fantastic, and also doing some notable work with its pitch shifting. Like I said, I have not always been the biggest fan of Crank Dat, but I do give credit where credit is due, and uh, credit is definitely due on this song. For my second pick, I've got a big one from Julian Cowler, Galactic Trumpet, uh, fittingly the follow-up to his Monster Cat debut, Space Flute. While I was a fan of Julian's stuff way back when on Revealed, uh, stuff like Cell, I've had a really hard time getting into his Monster Cat releases, not to say I don't appreciate the production value of it and the unique he's striving for, but nothing he had released prior to Galactic Trumpet had really hit me. I mean, Space Flute, which a lot of people seem to consider some of his most unique work, uh, to me kind of just sounded like a mix of Fox Stevenson's Tico and Dion Timmer's Shiawase, so I even had a hard time getting into that one. However, with Galactic Trumpet, I can finally start to see some of that uniqueness peering out. It's a really fun take on the kind of future house formula, bringing things up a notch from 125, 128 to 136, and with a somewhat compelling rhythmic structure on that lead synth in the drop, and then honestly the, the song just gets so crazy when it gets to that breakdown section after the first drop with this like big epic chorus, along with some huge trap drums, this whole section just feels larger than life, but overall just a really fun, melodic driven piece, and in my opinion the highlight of his Dream Odyssey EP, which I would say is my favorite project he's done thus far. My third pick is going to go to one that really threw me on a loop, uh, Isolation by Protostar and Have, an absolutely maniacal, neuro-influenced drum and bass tune. I'm not sure if I knew Protostar could even go this heavy, and considering the only other thing we got from him in 2019 was Feel Your Heart, uh, this track definitely caught me off guard with insane off-the-wall sound design all over this track, and especially in the drops with these pulsating like vocal screeches in the drops which just convey this urgency along with a fast paced jump up beat. Uh, this song really gets my heart rate up, almost makes me feel like I'm in one of those escape sequences in an old school Metroid game. And I guess that's also helped by the influence of the sci-fi vocal sampling that's happening throughout the song, System Stabilizing. Overall though, just an insane tune, uh, one of my favorites we've gotten from Protostar in a while, uh, probably my favorite in fact since New Horizons. And I would say more about Have, but I, I honestly don't really know their music that well and I think they've only put out a few songs to date at this point, so uh, hopefully I'll get to talk about them more in the future. If they can keep up the quality with songs like this, I'd definitely uh, like to continue following them. My fourth pick is going to be Justin O with Don't Bring Me Down, a song that, in my opinion, sees Justin really hitting the pinnacle of his bro step sound thus far. When he initially announced this track and said it was basically going to be ADHD, she's a killer on steroids. I was honestly kind of worried about it considering I, I feel like a lot of his Monster Cat releases have been following in a very similar formula to that song, especially Loving Her, Loving You. And even though I don't feel like that description is completely accurate, I do think that Don't Bring Me Down is probably the best iteration we're going to get of that She's a Killer formula. Justin's standard arpeggiator being replaced with some high-pitched chording and the whole first drop is absolutely lethal. Honestly, so intricately produced compared to a lot of the stuff we've gotten from Justin in the past, and I've generally liked his music. The second drop also taking listeners on a loop with the first half being more growl oriented, almost sounds like something I'd hear on a Never Say Die release track, and then going into like that more kismet AT Aliens type sound with like the super high-pitched elements. A little bit more minimalistic, but still feeling absolutely 
absolutely huge in the process. Uh, could definitely see this going off in a festival like She's a Killer. I'm pretty sure Delaney Kai was once again recruited for vocals, though uncredited in this instance. But once again, her kind of whispery voice definitely adds some atmosphere to the song, in addition to the dialogue sampling that's used all over it. And though the off-drop sections of Don't Bring Me Down aren't necessarily as enticing to me as they were on, let's say, Loving Her, Loving You, um, I still appreciate this song a lot for what it is, and especially considering it has kind of an extended outro, gets me really excited for uh, being able to listen to Justin's album. Frick, I want to listen to the album so bad! And my fifth and final pick is going to go to Mr. Dave Note with his song From Dust and Ashes. Not only was this song a huge refresher for me from No Taker's Pathfinder EP, which largely took on more of his like synthwave influenced slower tempo style, um, but it's just a fantastically produced progressive house song in general. One of my absolute favorites that the genre had to offer in 2019, it's an excellent example that you can take a melody and repeat it without it getting stale or uninteresting, and there's really not much more I can say about the song. I guess I'd say that it really takes a master producer for me to not absolutely hate a single melody just being repeated over and over again, but uh, No Taker pulled it off. I also feel like this is really his best work in the genre, though I did quite like So Much Love. I feel like it does an excellent job kind of in capturing that mystery that Dave introduced on the Genesis EP and putting it in a progressive house context. At nearly six minutes long, it's definitely not for those with a short attention span, but if you can sit down and fully immerse yourself in this song's world, I would definitely suggest you do. And that is all I have for today's video. As always, if you want to listen to the album for yourselves, if you haven't yet, I'm going to have the stream link down in the description below. And if you'd like to, definitely let me know what your five favorite songs from this compilation were. Uh, you don't have to give me your opinions on my opinions. If you're new to the channel and want to see more content like this, make sure to consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed the video, uh, leave me a like. Anyway, I'm Landon Remixes, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.